Uh, Troy Mary, what's his update? What can he do? Yeah, Troy and uh, – Really, we have three guys kind of in the same boat, right? We have Troy O'Meary, we have Jaden Alexis, and we have Luke Brockemeyer, all kind of at different stages coming off of ACL stuff. Right. Um, Troy and Jaden are clearly a little further along, right? They've got about three months or so on Luke. Um, Troy's been good. You know, they've um, his rehab with all of his straight line running looks good. We're doing some, you know, work cutting and different things. You know, clearly he's unable to practice right now, but he's at a he's at a pretty good stage, and I like the attitude. Um, you know, it's never fun when you have the same injury back to back. Right. You know, kind of two years in a row. But I commend him on his attitude the second time around. I think that he's really taken a positive approach to it. Uh, he's worked really hard. Um, I think he's kind of chomping at the bit to get back out on the field and get going. Um, Clearly, clearly, from our perspective, it's you know we want to make sure we do right by him. Um, that uh, when it, it is his time to go, that that he's in you know really good physical condition. I think mentally, he's in a much better space. Like I said, this time around, and um, you know we need him. Um, you know we're, we we don't have as many legs at wideout right now as as we would like, and so he and Jaden, you know, the sooner we can get him back, the better it is. But ultimately, um, we want to make sure that they're healthy and ready to go when that time comes. Steve, what are you seeing from Hayden Connor? Um, you know, Hayden is a guy that um, I thought made really good strides in last year as a true freshman and got some opportunities to play. I, I think he's another guy that um, really took advantage of our eight-week winter conditioning. I thought he really changed his body, um, lost a little bit of weight, but got stronger. Um, he's, a, he's a versatile guy. You know, clearly, you know, He's got a guard kind of playability, but yet has the ability to go play tackle when needed. So we like the flexibility there. Um, and what I like about Hayden, he's a tough guy. Um, you know, he's he's committed, and um, you know, he I think he has the right mentality internally from an offensive line perspective, buying into Coach Flood, and kind of that. You know, that that group has to play as one, and I think that he kind of embodies the characteristics that we're looking for. What did, you see, what did you see from each one of your quarterbacks in the screen? Yeah, I thought both guys Saturday played efficient football for us. Um, I think both of them, um, when we ran the numbers, were over 70% completion percentage Saturday. Um, we were able to hit some explosive plays. I thought both of them uh, executed well in the red area and on third down, and they took care of the ball. You know, not, you know, not a turnover from either guy. Um, so all those things were really positive. I think when they go, you know, when we went back and looked at the tape of them, I think they see some other opportunities that maybe were there. Um, but for our first scrimmage, um, I was very pleased with the way that they played. This time last year, you were really concerned because they were turn the guys last year were turning the ball over. So it seems like progress. Uh, yeah, definite progress. You know, I, I think one that's a that's an overall theme offensively, right? We have to take care of the football better than we did a year ago. That starts in practice. That's a mindset. That's the ball carriers. That's the receivers. That's the quarterbacks and ball placement. That's catching the ball. I thought we caught the ball really well Saturday. Um, you know, there, we had a couple balls off of fingertips, but you could argue, we, you know, we didn't have maybe one or two drops the whole day. And you're talking about upwards of 60, 60 pass attempts. So that that's really efficient. But Turnovers can happen a lot of ways. They can happen up front, missed assignments, not blocking the right people or getting beat. Um, they can happen, obviously, with the ball carriers, or they can happen with errant throws or tip balls and interceptions. So Saturday was really good of, of making good decisions, protecting the ball, um, owning the football. Today, not so much. You know, Today, we had a couple turnovers. And that, that side of me as a head coach is defensively, we have to attack the football. We have to get after the ball. And, they took advantage of those opportunities when the ball was in the air, tip drill, whatever it was. Uh, we got the tips and overthrows and, and made those interceptions today. Coach, um, early in the spring, you had told us to maybe ask the players about buy-in. Yep. So last week when we talked to Moro, he started saying things about how players are more focused on like chasing money, chasing women, chasing alcohol. I'm just kind of curious how challenging it is, is for you guys as a staff to change the culture. Um, what challenges have you guys faced? I think, you know, culture is always challenging. Culture is organic. Um, and I think that uh, Moore would be the first one to tell you. Um, I think he'd love to have some of the things he said back. And I don't know who, f who posed the question to him and how it was posed. But, um, you know, when you, when you speak 
big picture and all of a sudden it's like anything you know you have uh, one guy on our team gets in trouble we got a, our, a team full of guys that, that get in trouble and they, and they don't buy in um, so we have to be you know careful to speak about everybody when maybe there's an isolated one or two guys that are having those issues um, so preferably I would like our guys when they answer questions to y'all to talk about what they're doing, what's their buy-in, and be careful speaking on what others and where they're at. So in the end, I feel good about where we're at. Um, I feel good about uh, the process and, and the progression that we're making as a team. We've had a really good three months, which is what I talked to them on Saturday. Now we need to finish spring ball really well and then get ourselves for our, for our summer program and that eight-week program to set ourselves up for a uh, you know, for fall camp. So on that front, you know, it's a, it's a little disheartening that, you know, one guy makes a statement and all of a sudden we've got a team full of guys that, that like to do things outside of the program that, that, we, don't, that, that we don't adhere to and that, that is unacceptable. But um, it was said and it was written, and so, you know, that's okay. But, you know, what we do internally, what we do in-house is more important to me. So on, the, on that note, uh, setting aside his comments about specific players, setting – those aside, I mean, what what did you what did you think of a guy who does have the ability to kind of view big picture and talk about it? You know, he wants a player led team for sure, and those are the best kind. The player led teams are always the best. Uh, what did you just think of, of his, the, some of the message of his comments about the team itself? I thought the forum culture? was really poor. Um, he should not have done that in public. Um, a player led team, a really good player led team. Those issues, and if you have issues with anything, get taken care of in the locker room, get taken care of in the meeting room. Um, if you're really a family, you don't go out and talk about family business. Um, you take care of things internally. So that's the first part. But that's part of us educating these guys on what that looks like and how to do it. Um, I think his intentions were right, but the, the delivery and the form that it was used was poor. Sure. Um, in the end, you know, you have to make sure to mow your own lawn first, and you got to make sure your own house is in order first before you start to discuss uh, what somebody else is doing or how they're doing it. And I think that, that that was a great lesson for all of our guys to say, hey, you know, you can get in this moment, and you can get here in front of cameras and media, and you can get caught up in answering a question. you got to understand the form that you're in. And, you know, we like to handle our, any issues that we have internally, and that's truly being player-led, is that when you can approach somebody at their locker, when you can, can approach somebody at lunch, uh, and making sure your house is in order, that your lawn is, is, is mowed properly, then you, can, then you can start to motivate the next player about what he needs to do to raise his level and raise his play. Do sure. you discipline him for that or just message the team? Well, he won't be talking to you guys for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how, how many periods, I guess, on average, you say you get to handle or see the defense, and then as a result of that, how important is what Coach Mahoney does just handling the quarterback's position? Yeah, I, I, which I think, you know, you're, you're spot on. You know, there's a – it's a real balancing act. Um, you know, the one thing, you know, that I've always tried to hold on to um, – we all work our way up in the ranks in this profession, and we've all got an expertise. And then we grow and we expound on that expertise. And clearly the origin of me coaching football was at quarterback. And then that grew to offensive coordinator, to play caller, and then ultimately to, to head coach. And so um, I'd be remiss if, if now that I'm a head coach, I just didn't talk to the quarterbacks anymore because I have to manage the team. That's the one thing I think I'm pretty good at. Um, but I have a lot of faith in Coach Mill. We were, this is our fourth year together in, in doing this, and so we speak the same language. Uh, but I do try to go to just about every quarterback meeting. Um, when we're on the field, um, you know, I don't, I don't stand right next to the quarterbacks the whole time. A lot of the times I'm in the back. Uh, I'm behind the quarterback, and if I need to convey a message to him, I do. No different than if I need to convey a message to, to Coburn or to Demo, or to Christian Jones, or whoever that may be. I'm trying to coach kind of the team at that point. But, um, you know, clearly that's my expertise. Um, and definitely as the play caller, you know, I have a really good understanding of what that quarterback needs to be doing. So I am involved in the individual aspect of it, in the individual portion of it. Um, but, you know, you guys are there. When we go to, like, individual routes, I'm coaching the receiver, the quarterback, the tight end, the running back, because I, I, that's my expertise. Um, but understanding of the defense and the whys and the whats and having the ability to coach a guy 
uh, on defense for an error, things that we want to do better. Um, you know, I'm definitely involved in that, especially when we get to our team runs, our seven on sevens, and our team settings. Who won the scrimmage? Ah, uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's. I think there were plays on both sides. You know, we weren't really keeping score like yeah. we would a game. Um, I thought, I thought that a couple things came out of the scrimmage. I thought one two sides to this, right? I thought we defended the run really well Saturday, um, which we, we want to do, we need to do, we should be good at, and I thought we did that. I thought we, it, it made it difficult for us to uh, run the football offensively. I think we had one explosive run, and that came just about on the last play of the scrimmage, so that was a real positive. On the flip side, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I want to be able to run the ball better. That's critical to our success right. is our ability to run the ball. Like I said, I think passing game-wise, I thought we were really efficient. Um, you know, and when your two quarterbacks that are running with the ones and the twos are both over 70%, again, that's a positive offensively that we're efficient throwing the ball. On the flip side, you know, I want, I want, I want more deflections. I want more knockdowns. I want more interceptions. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if you necessarily win a scrimmage mm -hmm. when you're the head coach and, and that side. But I think both sides – came out of there with things that definitely to work on to get better at. And that's the goal, is that we're constantly growing, uh, that we're able to identify areas for, with room for improvement, and then go attack them as a coaching staff, and then see it carry over to the field. And I thought we saw that today. Like I said, you know, the offense took care of the ball really well Saturday. I think today we had three, possibly four turnovers. That's a real positive, that they went after the football, they attacked it better. Um, I thought the screen game was really good Saturday by the offense. Today, I think we probably called four or five screens. I don't know if any of them worked. So that means we're identifying kind of the soft sets. We're identifying those screens, and uh, we're taking that aspect of the offense away. And so that's, that's the growth that you want to see, that um, we're constantly trying to improve areas where there's room for improvement. About, about two-thirds of the way through spring, do you feel like you have a sense of who – might be your, your 22 guys, or is it a mindset of let's wait till some more guys show up in the summer and reshuffle a little bit? Well, I mean, I think naturally what we would like is to have 22 guys on each side of the ball. That, that's, that's really when um, you feel good about where you're at, you know, as a program. And you've got kind of your mainstay 44, and mm -hmm. then you have your next set of about 22 to – you know, 30 guys that are your, kind of your developmental players that, mm -hmm. that you know have room for growth and that can go. You know, we obviously have um, a fair amount of guys set to come this summer, uh, you know, upwards to 18, 19 guys showing up this summer. And that's, that's a lot of players to put in the mix. Right. Um, but I do think you're starting to see a level of comfort in guys. I'm starting to learn um, that the ones that, that really, you know, dove into the winter conditioning and then have carried that over to spring ball – and some of the guys maybe that are that are fighting it, not not fighting it in a sense where they don't want to, but man, they're trying to sustain where they where they where they got themselves to. Um, and then we got a lot of new guys that are that are new that are that you're seeing so much growth because they're learning the practice habits, they're learning the install, uh, they're learning the the way in which we go about our business, um, and then the consistency that's needed to do it. And then here is going to come eight, another eighteen to twenty guys, and we got to kind of start it again. And that's really where the player-led stuff's going to kick in because so much of the summer is about the team working well together. When we can't be with them, they've got to show those guys and get them prepared for training camp. And so I think we've got really cool leaders that can do that. Um, so hopefully, the, the, like I said, the goal is come you know, mid-August when we're about two-thirds of the way through training camp, right. we feel good about 44 or so guys that are ready to go plus our specialists and then, all right, who's this developmental group that maybe can contribute at some point throughout the season? Yeah, just started going off of that. Um, how many spots do you have left to add guys to the portal? And personnel evaluations this spring, has that changed in any way? Those priorities you mentioned in the Sunday Day press conference, has that changed areas you want to target? Yeah, I mean, it, more so than anything, it's about depth, right, when you're looking at specific position groups. And, okay, what's our style of play? How do we want to play? What do we want it to look like? Um, you know, maybe we've got a couple frontline guys, but the depth at that position you don't feel great about. And, you know, the hard part with football is, you know, nobody, nobody likes when an injury occurs, right? But at some positions, if an injury were to occur, they're, they're, they're tough to overcome. And we, we felt the effects of that a year ago, uh, right? I mean, we, when we lost Denzel at TCU, 
when we lost Jacoby Jones against OU and then when we lost Jordan Whittington in, in the OU game, those three injuries, I don't, you know, I don't know if at the time I gave them enough credit for having such a big impact on our season as we move forward. And so everything I'm trying to do is to assess, to make sure, like I said, that we've got 22 good guys on either side of the ball from a rotational standpoint, from a potential injury standpoint. And so um, we've got, we've got some, some room to maneuver here. Again, I don't want to take a player just to take a player. I'd like to take him because there's a potential need at the position. Um, and, you know, I think some things are starting to shake themselves out to where um, we have a pretty good idea of what we're looking for if we decide to do something moving forward. In safety, you have a bunch of guys who've come from different positions. Yeah. Can you kind of assess where you are at safety right yeah. now? Yeah, you know, I, I think, like I said, Anthony Cook has played a lot of football, and you kind of feel it. You know, he, he even though he's at a different spot, you kind of sense the comfort level back there, the confidence uh, to play. Keaton, to me, looks better now at safety than he really ever looked at corner. And that, that's an awesome that, – that's not knocking him at corner. It just looks like a much more natural position for him. He's a, he's a guy who's very physical, who can run. Um, you know, he gives you coverability at that spot to, to where when he gets, has to cover wide outs and tight ends, he's very comfortable doing it. Um, you know, J.D. Coffey's a physical player at the position. We saw glimpses of him late in the season last year. Um, I always feel bad because I leave guys out when I do this. But, you know, I, I like the, the natural instincts of, of Larry Turner Gooden and B.J. Allen. I think both of those guys for first-year players, you know, what are they, 10 practices in or whatever it is now today, uh, they've come a long way. And Mo Blackwell, you know, is one of the better tacklers on our team. Um, I think he's still trying to find his comfort zone playing kind of the deep part of the field. Uh, but he's a very natural tackler. He's a very good football player. We saw that last year on special teams. So we've got a good mix of guys. Um, you know, we've got great guys coaching them. Obviously, Coach Gideon's a fantastic coach, played the position, understands it. So, um, you know, we've, we've got work to do. But, man, it just feels better, feels more active, and it, it feels like we've got a really versatile group back there. Coach, this is your first year working with Coach Marion and Coach Choice. Yeah. What do those guys bring to, you know, the meeting rooms and to the practice room? Yeah. You know, Coach Choice, his energy is in, pretty incredible. I mean, this guy's an intense guy every day. He doesn't pick and choose. It's every day, every topic, whatever it is. He's very demanding of the players. Um, I think that the, the players are learning a lot from him and his style. Um, you know, we're finishing runs at a, at a level that I haven't seen running backs finish, um, which, is, which is real positive, which is putting them in a really conditioned space. And we've got a versatile group. Um, you know, Bijan, Roshan, Keelan, Jonathan Brooks, Jaden Blue. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in there. These guys can do a lot of different things, and Coach Choice is very comfortable uh, doing that. Coach Marion, you know, I think really has earned the respect of those wideouts. You know, he's a real technician. Um, those guys, they get on the grass and they go to work. Um, you know, I think that, that he allows them to – you know, learn conceptually. They don't learn just one position. They're learning big picture. So a lot of guys are interchangeable. And I'm seeing growth. And that's the part at both positions is every guy at those position groups is getting better. And they're getting better at things that we want them to get better at. And that's a sign of a good coach. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I think good coaches get what they emphasize. They both do it in their own style. Um, and clearly they provide some youth, some energy to uh, – kind of to, to what we're doing. And, and that was part of the goal in hiring kind of younger at those two positions. Uh, but both guys have really bright futures in the profession. Quinn has a, uh, an absolute gun as a quarterback and a quarterback's coach yourself. Uh, what's that fine line you have to walk between trying to harness that, that cannon and, and also when to turn him loose because he's got a little bit of Yeah, money. you know, I, I always remind them, you know, what's the goal when we call a pass play? to complete the pass, right? And so um, for a quarterback, it's no different than, than a lot of traits, whether you're a pitcher, whether you're a boxer. You want to have enough tools in your toolkit to get the ball completed. And that may be different arm angles. That may be different trajectories on the ball. That may be different velocity on the ball. Um, so it's, it's one thing to have the, the tool to have the big arm, but the really good quarterbacks have the ability to show touch, have the ability to have different arm angles and do the things. And I think Quinn has that, you know, that there's no question that he's shown 
the, the variability to make different styles of throws when you need it. Um, you know, quite frankly, I, I don't think he shows off his arm that much, as much as you would think that he would. I think he's a, he's a passer. He's not a thrower. And that, that part has been, a, has been a good sign. Do you, you, time for two last any, do you ever show him any man Ryan Tate? Because he's a guy with a gun, with a gun that had some good touch. Yeah, I showed him Matt Ryan Tate, the quarterbacks the other day from Monday Night Football, about getting Julio Jones and Muhammad and Sue, uh, Muhammad Sanu lined up. You guys may remember that. You can YouTube it. But oh, yeah. it's about command, right? It's about command of the offense, and it's about command at the line of scrimmage. And that wasn't just for Quinn. That was for Hudson. That was for Malik. That was for the room. Um, you're in charge. You know, we don't get to be out there on the field when when, when the ball's spotted and we're on the sidelines. You know, you, you got to drive the ship. And then, um, so yeah, we, we, do, we do show those things. Steve, aside, from, you... uh, aside from Hudson and Quinn, what have you thought of the play of your other quarterbacks this spring in, in the scrimmage? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, one, it's been great since last Tuesday. Malik has gradually kind of gotten back into the fold. And, you know, there's obviously a little bit of hesitation in him, and it would be for me too if I had to have ankle surgery and screws removed and, and those types of things. But you see the natural arm talent. You see the natural kind of instincts of, of passing the football, and that, that's been positive. I think we'll get a lot out of him here uh, over the last five practices, um, which, which is important. Um, you know, with the other guys, it's, it's just about consistency. and It's about trusting themselves. And, um, we need to be better kind of in the back end of that quarterback room. We're not where we need to be from a developmental standpoint, but that's, that's our job to try to get them there. Got one last one. Uh, Bijan, do you want to change anything to his repertoire, use him any differently next fall than you did the first year? Um, you know, I, without disclosing to our <laughs> opponents what we're doing, I yeah. think as we all know, Bijan is a, is a very versatile player. Um, he's a guy that – Obviously, is, has a unique and ability to run the football, whether it's inside the tackles or on the perimeter. He can play with power. He can play with speed. He has one cut ability to get vertical. He has a really natural catcher and a really natural route runner. So, it's all about game planning and scheming and making sure that that we're putting him in position to get touches uh, to where he can have a positive impact on the game. And so. Sure, we, we would love to continue to expand it, but ultimately I don't want to take away from the player that I know that he is. Um, we're, we, it's a unique set that, that all five of those guys have the ability to be versatile players. You know, I don't, I don't look at one guy and say he's a one-dimensional player. He's just a runner, or he can't catch the ball, or he can't run routes, or he can only run to the perimeter, doesn't run good in between the tackles. I mean, all five of those guys – are very versatile, and so for us, the, the kind of the fun part is that they're interchangeable, and we can do a lot of unique things with them. And it starts with Bijan, but but it, like I said, the other four guys all have that capability.